Hi, so Six Fight Media is on the road at RSA Conference 2024, and I'm speaking with Mukesh Gupta. He's the Chief Product Officer for Infoblox. Mukesh, how's it going? Very good, thank you. How's the show been for you so far? It's great, it just started, and uh, I'm really excited to be here. That's great. Well, you know, I've been working with Infoblox for the past year. Scott Harrell, your CEO, is someone that I got to know at Cisco quite well. And, you know, I was really amazed to learn about DNS and how there aren't a lot of companies that are leveraging it for security and networking like Infoblox is. So I'm excited to have this conversation with you. And I want to kind of kick things off around, you know, we're living in really trying times, nation state attacks. I mean, adversaries are getting more sophisticated with, with cyber attacks and cyber crime. Um, and the threat landscape is just, you know, it's constantly evolving. I mean, how do customers keep track of all this? Well, well, um, I look at it in three dimensions. Um, for the first one is the number of attacks. Sure. And if you look at, you know, about a few years ago, people were saying that is an attack every 39 seconds, and now there is an attack every 11 seconds. So by the time I finish the sentence, there will be yet another attack right. you know, somewhere in the world. So that's the first dimension. The second one that you mentioned is the sophistication of these attacks. Right. These are not individual people anymore. These are criminal organizations, and they just run just like a normal organization. Mm -hmm. They have large engineering teams. They're starting to use AI, and they are in the business of making money. Mm -hmm. So they they are innovating, and and this Gen AI stuff is just gonna you know give them all the powers to be more sophisticated. So that's the second dimension. And the third dimension I look at is the impact of these attacks. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the ransomware payments, you know, uh, last one I heard was about 20, $22 million. Right. Uh, and the economic damage to an enterprise is in billions of dollars right. after you know they, they're done dealing with these uh, ransomware attacks. The one that really broke my heart was this piece of news that I read about one and a half years ago. It was a hospital in Alabama that was dealing with a ransomware attack and they couldn't provide care to an infant and the infant died. Tragic. Tragic. So so that's the impact. So in all three dimensions, things are just getting worse and worse every day. You know, and I think one of the most highest profile uh, ransomware attacks recently was the MGM Grand. You yeah. know? And it's not in, in any way, you know, um, as dramatic as what you just described with the hospital, but Think about the millions and billions of dollars that MGM Grand lost when um, patrons could not uh, use their keys to get into their rooms, casino machines shut down, and it was a worldwide phenomenon. It wasn't just in, in Las Vegas, Nevada, right? So these bad actors are getting very sophisticated, and you brought up a great point. Generative AI is almost like a double-edged sword. Um, it's allowing adversaries to become more sophisticated in their attacks, but it can also be used for good by defenders. Right. And but I want to get back to um, specific attack trends. And is Infoblox seen anything specifically sort of bubbled to the surface recently? Yeah. Um, last year, the one that we saw bubbling up was these uh, attackers using lookalike domains of the single sign-on companies. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that was actually used at MGM. Okay. So what they do is they create these domains of Okta, Ping Identity, and they look very similar. So they'll replace O with some just one, one another, character, yeah. you know, and, and they're starting to use non-English characters that look exactly like those English characters with very subtle difference. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, you know, people get these phishing emails, they click on them, it actually looks like Okta or Ping. Right. So they get fooled and they enter their credentials. And now these attackers, you know, have the credentials of these employees. Once they get that, they have access to all the applications this employee has mm -hmm. because now they have, you know, cracked into their Okta account. Right. Uh, so that's the one we saw bubbling up quite a bit. Uh, last year, we saw about 1,600 uh, domains, these lookalike domains mm -hmm. of the single sign-on and multi-factor authentication. It seems like identity is the new hack. I mean, right. it's always been happening, but yeah, I mean, I'm seeing the same thing. Right. And it's, it's dangerous because it's the keys to the kingdom. Once you log into someone's Okta account, then you get access to all the applications. Right. Them, right? So, yeah. Well, so I know that Infoblox has been very focused on addressing a lot of these issues. There have been a lot of recent announcements. One, um, SOC Insights, I think, was, it was phenomenal. I published a research note on this when you launched it. Um, there's a, a paper from our firm that's going to be published uh, very soon. Um, but what are some other things that you're doing to really leverage the power of DNS to provide visibility and higher levels of protection for your customers? 
Yeah, so DNS is really the foundation of an enterprise as well as the internet. Mm -hmm. Nothing works, you know, without DNS. It's like the phone book for right. the internet, right? It's the I, way I like to look at it. I call it like electricity. Okay. Right? It's powering everything, but you don't realize the importance of it, you know, before an outage. Right. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I had an outage, pg and &E outage, and I realized I couldn't open my garage and I couldn't take my car out. I, I didn't think of that, right? Wow. So when these things happen, people realize the importance of DNS. Right. And because DNS is such a foundational protocol, it is allowed through all the security tools. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's the favorite protocol for attackers sure. because it's allowed everywhere. Yeah. So they can write it, they can do things with it. Uh, what's interesting is it's also an earliest detection and prevention point for the defenders. Mm -hmm. Um, because any device that gets compromised, the first thing it does is make a DNS query to something bad. Sure. And if you can detect it there or, you know, stop it there, then you can prevent a lot of these bad things from the start. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where we are focused um, because, you know, if we can, you know, use DNS as that prevention point, then we can effectively, you know, cripple these attacks. You know, and I also find it fascinating that that with InfoBlocks, your technology that's rooted in DNS has the ability to determine if a URL can become weaponized, and it can remain dormant for for years. Um, so, can you go into a little more detail sure. about the underlying technology that makes that a reality? Yeah, so we're taking a very different approach than other people who are, who are looking at DNS security. The way I like to describe it is. If you were to eradicate, you know, drugs problem in a city, you mm -hmm. could take two approaches. You could either go after the drug dealers, mm -hmm. and then you'll have to go after a lot of them right. uh, because there's just a lot of them. You have to go after schools and and streets and find these guys and and try to eliminate them. Mm -hmm. And the second approach you could take is go after the cartel, which is the supplier of these drug dealers. Mm -hmm. And if you find the cartel and you block them and kill them, then you can effectively eradicate all the drug dealers as well. It's a whole notion of distribution and end sales, right? Right, <laughs> right, right. So the other security tools, you know, are going after the drug dealers. After uh, a domain is weaponized, you know, it's hosting malware or even being used for phishing, that's when they detect it and then they prevent it. Sure. Versus the approach we are taking is going after the the cartel or the suppliers uh, of this. And one of the examples of this is Prolific Puma. This organization is basically the equivalent of Bitly. They provide URL shortening services to all these cyber criminals. Okay. So we found them and now we are tracking them. They own 45,000 domains. So we can just block all of them in one shot. Right. And now after this, if they buy a new domain, we pretty much know it's going to be something bad, sure. right? So we we don't have to wait for that domain to do something bad. We can just you know start blocking it now. Right. Uh, with this new approach, we are able to detect these bad domains sixty three days in advance than other tools. That's amazing. Uh, right, and it's also allowing us to deliver this really low false positive rate of point zero 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 two percent. That's three zeros after the the decimal. Right. So. Because again, you know, if the domain is bought and used by these bad actors, then the probability of you know it doing something good is pretty much zero. Sure. So that's the different approach we have taken. Yeah. Uh, so that's that approach is one innovation you know that has come out of InfoBlocks. Mm -hmm. You mentioned SOC Insights. Right. Uh, one of the big issues uh, with all security tools is you know we all generate a lot of alerts. And these SOC people, there's so much wow. fatigue. And, yeah, yeah. Right. and it's just like, how do you manage that? And like, right. to your point, to, to have that level of accuracy is so critical because it reduces the noise that SOC analysts have to, to manage and deal with, right? Right. So earlier this year, we launched SOC Insights, which is, you know, an add-on to our Blocks 1 threat defense. Mm -hmm. What it does is it analyzes thousands thousands of these alerts, uh, uses AI to consolidate them and generates fewer insights. So mm -hmm. you can look at that insight and then we provide all the relevant information behind that insight. Sure. But it's just one insight that SOC analysts can easily analyze. So that, that was something you know, mm -hmm. we did earlier this year. And the third one we just launched last week is what we're calling zero day DNS. Mm -hmm. uh, and what that is, is you know people are, there are 200,000 domains that are being purchased every day. 
and some of these, you know, go to these, you know, cyber criminals. Mm -hmm. So how do we effectively, you know, find and analyze this domain? Sometimes they use them within minutes or hours. They buy them and then yeah. they start using them for battle. Or they're dormant for or they're dormant for years. for years and then they surface back, right? So zero day DNS is about uh, you know, newly purchased domains and they get weaponized, you know, within minutes or hours. We are able to now stream those domains from our customers and then effectively analyze them really fast and then start preventing uh, uh, blocking those domains. You know, and I'm seeing just a rise in zero day attacks as well. I mean, there there are a lot of famous ones in the news yep. um, as well, and so it's it's a huge issue. But, but it's incredible that your platform can can detect zero day, but also monitor, you know. These, these domains that can become weaponized within months or years. So it's just super incredible. But as we wind up our conversation, um, I want to go to sort of a lightning round. Okay. So it's like kind of a game show kind of kind of thing. But what I'd like to do is give you a topic okay. and you give me a one-sentence statement. I know okay. it's going to be hard to do as a product okay. guy, but, but let's give it a try. And uh, the first one is Gen AI and its use in security. Okay. Uh, we are using Gen AI. We'll continue to use Gen AI to um, help our SOC analysts as well as make our product easier to use. I love it. I love it. Okay, number two, complexity of cloud management and delivery. I could speak forever on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have so many customers using uh, DNS, DHCP, IPAM across you know four or five different clouds. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to uh, unify the management of that to help our customers. That's great. And I'll just add, one of the biggest challenges with, with cloud networking is just the disparity in, in architectures and the, visi you know, the lack of visibility and the, the gaps that, that, that are created. So, oh, this is a good one. You should have a good one for this. DNS. DNS. <laughs> DNS is the foundation on which we operate. So we'll continue to invest heavily in DNS to fight the cyber criminals and keep our customers safe. I love it. And finally... Everything as a service. Everything as a service. Um, that's the trend. The cloud ops teams want everything as a service, and we are investing heavily in providing our DNS security as a service, our DDI, which is DNS, DHCP, IPAM as a service, and we mm -hmm. continue to invest in that so our customers can just use the services and not have to deal with infrastructure. I'll, I'll just say, it's like, why are there other companies that are leaning into DNS as, as heavily as Infoblox? Do you have a Do you have an answer for that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really it really kind of separates you from the pack and and really differentiates you. But um, I want to ask you a crystal ball question. And as an analyst, I wish I had a crystal ball because if I did, uh, I'd be right all the time. But um, if you had a crystal ball, what do you think the biggest challenges that security uh, professionals are going to face? You know, in the year twenty twenty five. Um, a few. So Gen AI is a big trend. Oh, sure. I think it'll. Uh, create this situation where AI is fighting the AI, so it'll be used by the uh, yep. the offenders, like we talked That's about. It's that double-edged sword. It's right? a double-edged sword, so we will have to up our game, and the security tools will have to use Gen AI to fight these sophisticated attacks that are using Gen AI. So mm -hmm. it's just going to create both sides, of, uh, offenders and defenders. Mm -hmm. The second one is as all the enterprises start to build these Gen AI products, the security industry will have to figure out how to, um, you know, protect these Gen AI based products because the standard security tools, the, the models, the apps, the right. data, all of it, right? Right. <laughs> and the third one, I think, is you know, I'm just wary of these look like domains. You know, mm -hmm. I look at them and they're just so hard to distinguish. Right. And uh, people are don't have a lot of patience these days. You know, you're just working too fast right. and people end up clicking on these domains. So these lookalike domains, I feel like will be uh, more and more dangerous and, and people won't be able to distinguish and fall for it. So I, I agree with all, all of the above. And, you know, one of the biggest challenges is culture and it's instilling a sense of culture at every aspect of the organization. So much of these attacks are socially engineered, right? And I really believe what Infoblox is doing with DNS uh, can help address a lot of that social engineering. But Mukesh, it's been a great conversation, uh, very enlightening. And um, again, um, uh, we'll, we will be publishing more insights and strategy, a research uh, brief that will go into more detail around SOC Insights and some of the other things that we've talked about today. But thank you so much for your time. It's been a great conversation. Thank you, Will. I had fun. Awesome. Okay.